Hello everyone and welcome back to Death Stranding. This is episode 24, where last time we confronted Ruby. And it was a stressful encounter. The pale emitter paralyzing us with the with the waves and then having to let her go right at the end. Um, otherwise it would not have gone down very well, I expect. So we investigated uh, the tent and the area that Ruby has been hiding out in since Harry arrived. And now we're going to move on. So uh, what we now have to do is we're going to return to the Whirling uh, after the whole instigator debacle. Something there has something to answer to. Um, call your station to find out more if you dare. So when we get the chance, we can um, call the station to find out more. Uh, we've also got to still determine where the shot came from, checking the island for bullet traces. So, not many tasks left. Not many tasks left. So, we're, I guess, like, case in point, first thing that we should be doing this episode is we're going to head back to the Whirling. So, let's, uh, let's get out of here. Rattan! Now is the time! Okay, hang on, is this... Is it time? Till the magic happens? Is it time? He's getting ready for the end game? Time for what? Oh, you will see. Here we go. Alright, this is why we've been... This is why I haven't taken off the necktie the whole time, because it's just like, just don't take it off, it's waiting for the magic. It feels like the tie is rubbing itself against your chest like a cat in heat. Mm-mm. Fast the spirits! The blue medicinal spirits! Grab the bottle and uncork it! It is time to unleash the other world. What does the necktie have to do with the the medicinal spirits, though? Wait, right now? Ruby's gone. I don't really think there's anything to celebrate here. Hush, hush, Bratan. Now is not the time to celebrate. Now is the time to get ready! Trust me on this. This is what it's all been building towards. It's gonna be off the hook. Off all hooks. Damn. Well, I guess we're not offering that blue medicinal spirit to uh, Idiot Doom Spiral. We've got to do something with the with the necktie instead, which is probably going to be the better option, I would assume. Slowly uncork the blue medicinal spirit. The bottle opens with a silent, mysterious hiss. The fumes rising from its mouth are as crisp as the northern winds, howling somewhere, lashing the boardwalk with brine and rain. An ancient warmth crawls under your skin. Now, Bratan, take me off. Take me off? What? I didn't know I could do that. Bratan, have I ever lied to you? Just take me off. Take the necktie off. Your fingers manage to undo the oily knot and the necktie slides off. It looks so frail sitting there in your hand, weighing almost nothing. Now what? Now, put me in the bottle. But why? Trust me! Just trust me! You and I are gonna have so much fun, it should be illegal! I suspect that it might be. Just put me in the bottle, Britain! I'm not gonna let you down! You and I are like the same person! Put the necktie in the bottle. As the necktie slides into the purifying liquid, Large stains of grease rise off from it and float to the surface. <coughs> there, they quickly dissolve and disappear completely, cleansed by the blue spirit fire of 98.7% pure alcohol. The fabric looks almost new again, no longer like a disgusting worm of the lower intestine, but like a colorful and deadly poisonous reef snake of the Insulindian Ocean. The necktie just wanted to wait until the perfect moment to get drowned in alcohol. So what next? The necktie floats in the bluish liquid with almost unearthly grace. Necktie? There is silence. Cork the bottle and put it away. The lieutenant has been observing you quietly all this time. Spirit bomb. Okay, we just made a Molotov cocktail. That makes sense. The lieutenant has been observing you quietly all this time. He's struggling to keep silent, but finally seems to give up. He's just like, <coughs> Harry, what have you been doing this whole time? I've got to ask, what are you doing? 
I don't really know, but I'm eager to find out. In my family, you put a piece of clothing in some hard liquor and drink it for good luck. Okay. Okay, Kim. I didn't want to tell anyone, but my necktie has been talking to me lately. God. I like building up my trust with Kim, but I think when I open him up about things that I'm honestly experiencing, uh, he just thinks that I am absolutely crazy. <laughs> okay, Kim. I didn't want to tell anyone, but my necktie has been talking to me lately. Of course it has. It started when I woke up in the whirling in rags. It's been talking to me ever since. And what has the necktie been telling you, if I may ask? Um... <laughs> Signs of some really hardcore mental illness, Kim. I would assume. <laughs> Why did you put it in the bottle? Uh, because it told me to. Right, okay. Anyway, I'm glad you told me your necktie has been speaking to you. That must not have been easy. <laughs> For a second it looks like he's about to add something. We're all under stress. This is turning into a great big mess. I'm not judging. Just keep it together. Nice. Let's go. Okay. Thank you, Kim. Spirit Bomb. Equip this when times are most dire. Your spirit guide to the party scene. The horrific necktie... Okay, so I see how it works now. Yeah, it's floating serenely in the blue medicinal spirit. As it is still 98.7% alcohol, this necktie cocktail is extremely flammable and should be kept far away from an open flame. Interesting. Are times most dire? I feel stressed all of a sudden. If the time is now, I feel like I'm going to equip that. I just realized that Kim's also got his gun out as well. Which is cool. Yes. He's just holding it now. That's awesome. We're both just some gun-wielding Bretons. And I also have a Molotov cocktail. Uh, so, no complaints, I suppose. Uh, let's save. <laughs> That's so weird. That's so weird. But there you go. We know, we know what the... Medicinal spirit was finally four after all this time. Okay. Um, let's go... <clears throat> before we head to the... Oh, actually, it's probably too early. It's 10 a.m. I don't think the, dr the drunks will be out for us to even have a conversation with, will they? Oh, no. They're here. Fuck yeah. They're just not there first thing in the morning. Um, before we head over to the whirling while we're here, let's see if we can get some more conversation out of Idiot Doom Spiral. Because the medicinal spirit reminded me of it. Sunset. To kill a sunset. Idiot Doom Spiral has a great voice. I like I like it listening to it. I want to hear the story of your name again, or have you got any more stories? I do. But as you can see, my fuel tank is running quite low. If you catch my drift. Now, we haven't given him the Commodore Red yet. We've given him a Pilsner. Um, and then... I think that was it. So let's do some sweet Commodore Red. Classy. He snatches the bottle and pushes the cork in through the bottleneck. The tale I'm about to tell you is an urban legend particular to Martinez. That said, I first heard it from a former bicycle courier in Koran. There are many variations on the basic story, and the details often conflict. What everyone agrees on is that nobody knows the exact nature or identity of the phenomenon. Okay. Are you telling the story of the headless... <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. <clears throat> Summer of 44. 17-year-old Gertrude Hett is walking home from a late shift at the harbor. It's almost midnight. She stops for a cigarette near the canal. The streets are warmed by a southerly breeze. The lights of a passing motor carriage bloom and fade in the distance. In the harbor's dark, her cigarette is a beacon, dancing alone. The image comes to you effortlessly, as though you'd walked the same streets yourself a thousand times. Our heroine finds herself enjoying the peace and quiet the canal provides. He looks up to the skies as if searching for peace himself. What she doesn't know is that her peace is about to be shattered. From behind her comes the clattering of hooves. Startled, she turns around, and what does she see? 
A man running in the field, clapping coconuts together. A horse? Well, yes, but it's the man <clears throat> on the horse that's of interest here. A man... The pause is long and dramatic. With no head on his shoulders. Wearing a found tracksuit, searching for the legendary found cap that went missing when he lost his head. I have the found cap. That's super spooky. Yes. According to legend, young Gertrude Head had to endure years of psychotherapy before she was able to look at a horse or tracksuit again. And she's one of the lucky ones. Gertrude Head may have been the first to witness the headless found rider, but she wasn't the last. Oh no. Tell him about the two feminists by the locks. Fuck, Rosemary, they were dating. No one said they were feminists. Everyone always misremembering this stuff. Hmm. This wouldn't be the De Ponte Delgado case, would it? What? You know it. Oh. I've read the case file. But please, go on. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> Early autumn of 46. Ulla De Ponte and Eva Delgado are fishing near the waterlock long after the sun has set. The wind picks up. A sky already dark now blackens. Water starts falling from above. The first cold rain of the season. Two women stand on a small outcropping of rocks. One of them is wearing a purple raincoat. Thin lines reach out from the rods into the sea. Small droplets start appearing on the surface with increasing frequency. The women are caught in the downpour. They act quickly. Eva gathers the rods whilst Ulla turns around to reach for the tackle box. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. When she sees something, her shriek is so violent that the residents of the nearby apartment building believe lightning has struck. But there is no lightning. Only a heavy downpour and the silhouette of the headless Falm Rider looming on the horizon. Ulla makes a run for the shore, but Eva slips on a wet rock and disappears into the cold, cold canal with nary a sound. Mm. Her body is never recovered. He looks you straight in the eye. So we can ask him or ask Doom Spiral. I'm going to go with my partner on this one. What did the case file say? Naturally, Ulla de Ponte became the prime <clears throat> suspect in the disappearance of Eva Delgado. De Ponte maintained that it was the so-called headless fallen rider and that she ran fearing for her life. During the investigation, it became apparent that there was a love triangle, the third party being some small-time businessman. I don't remember the exact details. The leading theory was that an argument broke out on the jetty and De Ponte pushed Delgado into the canal, then cooked up this stupid cover story. Okay. Was she arrested? No. She committed suicide before she could be taken into custody. They found her oh. in the bathroom with a rifle, her face slowly peeling off the ceiling. That last detail, though, my god. Instantly puts that image in your mind so well. Not a pretty scene. Yeah. Man, that's some grisly detail. <laughs> oh well. Here's to another case closed. He takes a hearty swig from his bottle. Anyway, that's the story of the headless foul rider. Pretty crazy, huh? Who was the Headless Rider before he died? Well, Tequila, that's part of the legend. No one knows for sure. There are a couple of possibilities, though. Some say he was an undercover cop who blew his cover and got beheaded by the vicious gang he had infiltrated. Now he rides, searching for his lost found cap, plotting revenge. Oh, Headless Brother, where art thou? Others claim he was a professional jockey who veered off course during a steeplechase, ended up in somebody's backyard, and got decapitated by an exceptionally taut clothesline. <laughs> Even decapitation couldn't stop his commitment to the sport. Are you that committed? Personally, I think he was just some guy who hanged himself from a really tall tree, and the fall was so violent that his head came clean off. Coincidentally, at that exact moment, a horse <laughs> happened to pass under him, and his beheaded corpse mounted it, 
where it remains to this day. But then, no one really knows. Amazing. For some reason, this does strike you as the most plausible theory of them all. I bet he was the jockey. Your theory said something's plausible. I got a hunch that it was the undercover cop. I'd want revenge too. Let's go with the undercover cop. That would explain the tracksuit and his need for revenge. Not sure how the horse fits in, though. I don't know. I, I don't buy it. The horse is a metaphor. Anyway, to each his own. You want to hear any other stories? I've already seen some weird shit on this case. A headless jockey in a tracksuit fits right in. Hard to argue is that, I suppose. That's the reality situation for you. You think you got a handle on it, then blam! It throws some wild shit at you. Uh, that's why it's critical to stay well hydrated. That's nothing. I've got an even crazier story. Yeah? <clears throat> Zoe shit tequila. There's no way you know a better one than that. Uh, so we've got the cold Domama Dakwa, the gnome of Jeroma, <clears throat> or the kind green ape. Let's go with the gnome of Jeroma. It dissolves its victims with acid. Acid gnomes? Sounds like a stupid low concept band name. Okay, what about Cold Dome on Madakwa? I have to admit, that's pretty high concept. Still not as awesome as a headless rider in a found tracksuit, though. What about the Green Ape pen? You know, the one that you stole from me. Yeah. You always try to pick the lamest option possible. Come on, Tequila! Okay, whatever became of the headless phone rider? No one knows. Some say he stalks Martinez to this day. And can be seen near the canal when the clock strikes midnight. He won't, though. Because it's just a stupid legend. Come on, Kim. Hi. I saw him one night when I was right shit -faced. Have you got any more urban myths? I actually do have one. The strangest of them all. But I'll need to fortify myself before I can tell that one. Okay. Do you have anything to fortify old Doom Spiral? Tell me you got some story juice. Okay, so if he's got the big story, the strangest of them all, we need to give him the bottle of pale-aged vodka. Let's do it. Let me see. Ah, very high concept. Thanks. Let's get that story out of him. This last one is the most Martinet story I've ever heard. A comically long swig. It's uh. still going, yep, yeah, thus fortified. He continues. I've never heard it mentioned outside of here. At first, I thought it was a joke, to be honest. But I've been on the coast eight... Nine months now, and in that time, I've seen at least three expeditions come through, searching for something. A shovel hits the sand somewhere behind the reeds, near an abandoned construction yard. The young men look over their shoulders suspiciously. The sound of their digging seems loud in the sudden silence. Cryptids? Magic animals? No, man, this is serious stuff. A place to call home? No, Tequila. Most people already know where they live. It's guys like you and me that are the exceptions. You lost keys? Hey, hey! <laughs> Fuck you, Tequila. Okay, what kind of expeditions? All kinds. I've seen archaeologists, gangsters, even a bunch of ad agency types. I'm telling you, Tequila, this thing's got a pull on certain kinds of people. Wait, what do you mean certain kinds of people? You know, obsessive types. People with predilections. What exactly are we talking about here? Some of those expeditions come back after a week or so, looking haggard and dejected. Others don't return at all. The first time I saw one of these expeditions, I thought they were fucking with me. There was no way it could be true. It was just... Too high concept, even for me. I'm not even sure I should be telling you this story, to be perfectly honest. You're in a fragile state, and it might be too much for you to handle. I can handle it. Okay, fine, I'll tell you. But I'm warning you, it's pretty out there. Our story begins at a legendary design studio, right here in Martinez. There was this designer, 
His exact name is lost to history, but in life, he was a legend. Made it big in Aranya, where he did some real pioneering work on grotesque and sans-serif typography. A fucking genius, man. That is, if he even existed. Who knows? It's an urban legend, after all. Anyway, some time later, he started his own personal studio here in Martinez. And that's when he started working on some really wild stuff. I'm talking some glass-smooth, forward-looking design language. The kind of thing that would totally overthrow the old regime, design-wise. A paradigm-shattering revolutionary. But then, something turned. You see, it's widely known that nose candy and pioneer <laughs> graphic design work go hand in hand. Wait, nose candy? You know tequila, nose candy, the white railroad, party powder. <laughs> the kids on the streets also call it snow day. <laughs> or email and gold. <clears throat> for the plateau on which most of the world's supply is grown and harvested, typically by slave labor. Sinus salt, the white knight. Can't see, for its popularity among the aristocratic class of the prior century. Along with a number of more banal street names. <laughs> Blow, of course, but also flake, powder, pearl. Really, anything that's white will work. <laughs> He's talking about cocaine, baby. Are you referring to cocaine? Shit, yeah, tequila. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So what happened to him? You've got to understand, the work this guy was doing was so high concept that regular amounts of cocaine just weren't cutting it. By the end, they were bringing it in by the lorry load. Now... As you might imagine, snorting that much cocaine can't be healthy for a regular human, right? Right. Wrong. Do it all the time. Uh, all the time? All day, baby. Okay. Hey, Tequila, pay attention. The story goes that one day he was balls deep in work on what he thought would be his pièce de résistance. An advert so minimal. It contained neither text nor images, just pure white. Apparently the idea was too high concept even for this genius. He dropped dead right at his desk before he could finish. His last words are recorded to have been, It's as white as a blizzard of cocaine. What a loss for the world of design. I know, Tequila. I know. He takes a swig, considers pouring some out for this lost genius, then thinks better of it. I'm not going to pour out this pale-aged vodka. But the story doesn't end there. Supposedly, when they performed the autopsy, the coroner discovered nearly a quarter kilo of coke jammed into his nasal cavity. That's almost certain mm. anatomically impossible. That's a ridiculous amount. Wrong again. No. <laughs> Where there's a will... There's a way. That's right. 250 grams of blow had accumulated um, in there over the years. Mm -hmm. We're talking high-grade Saramaritzian pure. Not that cut-rate shit your grandma does. There are those who believe the designer was buried with this quarter key of nose candy still lodged in his sinuses. That's what those expeditions are looking for. The cocaine skull. Ah, oh, man. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Cocaine Skull. The Cocaine Skull. The Cocaine Skull. Wow. No. Wow. And why do people think the skull is here in Martinez? Here's the kicker. This designer, this lead designer of a world-famous design studio, was born in Martinez. A local boy. Martin Martinez. Martin Martinez. That's why he brought his studio here, back to where it all began. And that's why they buried him here, too. Perhaps right under Ab's pipe there. Or probably further down the coast, or in some yard in Martinez proper. A hidden mausoleum, no one knows exactly. No, my grandma always told me his grave lay somewhere on the islets on the bay. 
This is ludicrous and physically impossible. <laughs> Sinuses can contain that amount of anything. You gotta think big, Kim. Now, now, detective. Always skeptic. Exactly. My only question is, where does one get a shovel? What are these expeditions plan to do with it? The archaeologists say they want to put it in a museum. The gangsters say they want to sell it on the black market. And the ad agency guys say they're seeking inspiration. Bullshit. They just want to snort it. But you could beat them to it, Harry. You could snort the magic skull cocaine instead. I'm pretty sure they all just want to snort it, though. And why wouldn't they, eh? Sounds like right strong stuff. Ah, it's a task. Rosemary, you said something about uh, Islets? Don't listen to him or his grandma. He's just making things up. No, my grandma told me. I've heard other people say it too. That it's underwater. Or no. Maybe it was the storm sewers. Or maybe it's in the air. Or in an ancient state pyramid offshore. I think you're onto something, Kim. In a pyramid? Now that would be something. What have you learned from the other expeditions? They're pretty vague about it in general. The gangsters like to claim they're looking for the grave of a friend with picks and shovels. <laughs> the archaeologists act all official about it, saying they're conducting serious research. Honestly, I think they're not really scientists, just rich. The junkies, for some reason, are pretty upfront about it. They just say they're looking to snort some blow out of a dead man's nasal cavity. Honest men on an honest quest. You should join them. By now, I'd say I know about as much about it as anyone on the coast. Okay, I'm convinced. Let's go find it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on just a minute. Finding it right now is literally impossible. Oh. What? What? Why? For one, the way is blocked. By that big lorry that says Delta Logistics Company on the side. You definitely have to search the area behind that lorry, too. Yet, it is impassable. And second, outfitting an expedition like that is expensive. It'd have to be a big production to do the cocaine skull justice. You need new gear, people who know what they're doing, all kinds of provisions. It's just not feasible within the economic and temporal frame of our current setup. Matter of fact, Unless a bunch of money just falls out of the sky, we might never know what's up with that skull. We need the light bending guy to finance this. I have to agree. We barely have what we need to solve the case we've got now. <laughs> we can't afford to run around chasing after quasi mythical pieces of drug paraphernalia. Okay, but it was a fun story, right, Kim? Besides, it would look extremely bad for the RCM to be caught up in something that has the word cocaine writ large on it. The PR is tricky on this. No, it's cleaning up the streets, Kim. It's evidence. Damn, that's too bad. Wait, maybe there's another way. Maybe up around the coast? Don't give up now. Yeah, well, that's the reality situation for you. Who knows, though? Maybe someday we'll get our chance. Um, that's, uh, he said that was the final story. Not that I can think of, currently. I guess that makes sense. You have been drinking a lot. That might be the case. Yeah. Be seeing you. Nice. Okay, that was awesome. I liked that. <laughs> um, be ready, Breton. Yeah, fucking, yeah, okay. We are ready. Okay, that was worth, uh, that was worth getting some more out of, uh, Idiot Doom Spiral. Uh, let's fast travel back to Martinez. Um, no fast travel? No fast travel. Okay, I can't fast travel from the fisherman shack to the waterfront, which is odd. Which is slightly concerning, actually. Hmm. Oh, uh, well, we're walking. I mean, it's not too far. Oh, man. A faint smell of soldering, melted insulation, nylon, and ozone. Hmm, huh, 
The pawn shop is closed. Stop. Just up ahead. Danger. Ah, uh, this is why there's no fast travel. You are prepared. Don't put away your friend, your weapon. It is glowing in your hand, ready to serve. Holy shit, okay. Things are about to get serious. The oily tail end of your necktie turned fuse glistens in the cool spring light. Okay, well, we've both got our guns out, and I've got a Molotov. I'm ready for anything? Question mark? <clears throat> Kim, there's danger up ahead. Yes, I hear commotion. Let's go. I'm ready to do this. Good. Be ready to take damage. Be ready to take damage. Okay. Well, I'm glad that Ruby, dying to Ruby, pushed us to an incentive to fucking actually buy heals. Um, should I drink alcohol? I think I'm out. I'm all out of alcohol because I just gave it all to Doom Spiral. <laughs> So we none of that, none of that. That's funny. Uh, that's fine. Um, oh, I can put something on my neck now, though. Well, let's go for Inland Empire and Volition. I can put something new on my on my neck. Uh, we've got Pain Threshold. I could go for the Pain Threshold on the Windbreaker. <clears throat> I kind of want to be dressed for the part, though. I kind of want to be dressed for the part. God damn. Okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna save and I'm gonna take a quick toilet break if things are about to get serious because I was not expecting things to get so serious so soon. <laughs> the low rumble of a bass beat. Your heart repeats it. I'm all out of shits to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Jesus. There's another one. Wait a minute. Hold on. So dude has now decided to suit up. He's no longer fake striking. Of course, nah. So we've got two that we were aware of, but there's a third one, and he's got a rifle. But they're here confronting these guys because of the murder. So I don't think this guy is the killer with the murder weapon. It could be a similar weapon, though. Fuck. It's Lizzie and the Hardy Boys versus the mercenaries. And we've got Gart on the railing over here. What the fuck? Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up. Talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. Dude, the music right now. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. Who's the who's the woman? Kim, what's going on here? Shh. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. Mm. The kipt is merciful, Ooh. willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. To Paul. Dude, look at that portrait. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Yeah, dude. There's a fucking third one too with a rifle. Look at the look at the helmet. Peaceful. Ugh. Dude, look at that portrait! Rude Honklauen. That's fucking spooky shit. Peaceful. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. 
The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's the third one. How did we miss something like this? Was there any way, any, I don't think anyone ever even mentioned a hint of a third one. We're out of time, this is... The Mercenary Tribunal. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. The big one is the mercenary at the gates. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. Fuck. A sound strategy. He's the leader. Well, I guess he's the new leader, isn't he? Considering the victim. Fuck. So let's walk away for now. <laughs> Which I fucking doubt we can do. This is a heated moment. Or well, stop! This is the police! Holy crap. All right, are we ready? I, I whoa, we don't have a choice. Stop! This is the police. We're fucking charging in. Let's go. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backwards. Yeah, we got fucking. They're drunk right now, dude. Big fuck. Jesus. Easy now. No one needs to die here today. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the blue medicinal spirit in your hand seems to have a pulsating glow. Fuck. It feels enticing somehow. I don't, I don't see there being a peaceful way out of this one at all. God, was it, isn't it kind of stupid for us to have just charged in between them? I guess we're going to head back up the Hardys, but we could have had Kim stay in cover behind the behind the, the vehicle, you know, with his gun, and maybe I could have charged in the middle at least, not both of us. Alright! End game! <sighs> Light me on fire and throw me in his face! Oh my god, Necktie. Necktie's back to life. Wait. It's a good thing you have an anthropomorphic petrol bomb. It really is. But you have to soften him up first. Present an argument. Even if it comes to a fight. It's a good idea to get under his skin first. I don't know about Whoa. this. Under his skin. Whoa. What if he gets under yours? I'm Whoa. barely keeping your hand from trembling here. Okay, hang on. We've got okay. We got three red checks. Luckily, two of them are high. This one is not. Which is light the spirit bomb and launch it at him. Think of an argument. Talk about the hanged man. Fuck! Wait a minute. Ellis Cortenaire. That's the name of... Huh. Are they Foster Brothers, then? Because then they certainly... I don't know. Because that would be his Foster surname. They're either... Yeah. Shit. Who is that? I didn't know you had a third guy. Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer. How and Cloven. He doesn't talk much. How and Cloven. How and Cloven. He doesn't talk much. All of you cunts inside out. Ha! <laughs> doesn't swear. For some reason. What was that? Rude? Rip you open. Perhaps it's for the best. Him not talking too much. The killer? The gunner. The raddest. The killer. He points to the figure clad entirely in ceramic plate. What do you think he does? Picks flowers for a living? There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, Owen Clerven's you count helmet. little stick figures. 19, 20, 21. His kill counts. Count the figures. About 50 little stick figures. All of them black. Plus two little white ones in the end. Okay. 
These men served in Semini, the native islanders. You think you're real tough, huh? This killing is meaningless. Huh? He just stares at you with his watery eyes. What are we waiting for? Let's blow that pig fucking mouth off his face. Lance Corporal, just fucking shut up and wait for your order. Ooh, man, he's stressed out too. He is not used to commanding. Or yeah. He feels uncomfortable. He'd rather shoot to kill. Far out, okay. Listen, they didn't do it. Yeah? Who did that? Oh, wow. No, oh, it was Classio. Yeah. It was someone else. Someone who's not here now. How fucking convenient. Oh, man. His fingers are twitching. That's a draw reflex. He's about to draw. Oh, maybe we should have done the red checks first. Hang on. Oh. He was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. You think I'm fucking stupid, cop? What if I just shot one of your pals here right now? Huh? It would be false justice, my friend. How about the kid? Tell me, the magic fucking sniper, one more time. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who. He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. Oh fuck. Uh. Logic. Oh my god, it's a fifty-eight percent. Think, think. Why doesn't he believe me? Oh my god. The whole. Oh. Jesus. Together, Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud, in a public place. Listen, he was shot. He wasn't hanged. Listen to me. You're lying. DePaul heard it. You heard wrong. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. The hanging was only a cover-up. Listen. Fucking liars. The shot rings in your ears. A low, tinny ring. Then, the Hardy Boys yell something. Fuck, did someone just get shot? The young woman stands and looks behind. Oh my god. The shot has flowed over her head, crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. Shit. That was... Oh my god. <laughs> I missed. He missed. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. What topic? Shots have been fired. Act before it's too late. This was a close call. Okay. Choosing the non-red check options, I think, are incredibly... Risky. Stand there quiet, quietly. Hope nothing bad happens. Fucking hell. Alright, we got two 92% chances. Know about Downwell, for think of an argument, and talk about the hanged man. Alright, let's just go for rhetoric. Alright, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Krenel would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. You were called Downwell once. What happened? What always happens when you get good at your job? That name meant night raids. Fucking extrajudicial funky time burn villages. Shit, it sounds bad on the radio. The same thing happened when we were called whatever the fuck it was. Probably won't be called Cronell for much longer, either. Not after this shit. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Now fire. Fuck them up. Do it. The muscles on your back tense up. Ooh, this went up. Okay. Got him talking. Okay, so now we'll go talk about the hanged man. That'll throw him off even more. Where's Classia? She can explain this. Yeah, where is she? 
Who the fuck is that? Classia, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left. She left. God damn, she bailed because she knew it was about to get heated. Unarmed, hunched, but keeping it together. God, what the hell are you doing here? What do you mean she left? What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire. You know how much windows cost? What do you mean she left? She left. Her room's cleaned out. Right before these assholes showed up. Hmm. She smelt trouble. Fuck. She's gone. We should have arrested her. I don't know. I don't know. I think she's looking out for herself, but she's definitely... I don't think she's connected to this shit. Whether Kim wanted to arrest her or not, I, I feel conflicted about that. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! Jesus. She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. Okay. Talk about the hanged man. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Who are you? Corty? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner, reporting in to Cortiner. burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click, softly, click, click, click. The realization comes to you like a picture puzzle coming together. His name is Raoul Cortiner. The dead man's name is Elise Cortiner. He's brothers with the deceased. Mm-hmm. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, you're all sentenced to death by lead. Cortiner, I know that name. He sways from left to right, inspecting you. Raoul and Ellis Cortiner, look him in the eye. I'm sorry about your brother, Raoul. He wasn't my fucking brother. We just grew up on the same farm and got beat into place by the same sick fuck. Beaten by a foster parent or someone on the farm. And then went to the same military academy and the same unit and the same war. Same fucking mud hut town too. Okay, good. His parents left him in a fucking leaf compactor. Who? Laylee? Yes, when he was small, just an infant. We researched him. We contacted the ICP and looked at his birth records. That was in there. And other things. They fucking put Laylee in a leaf compactor. And now these cunts finished the job. He waves at the gang huddled by the doors. There's real anguish in his voice. A drunken sadness suddenly engulfs him. Memories. It's a mind fuck, Corty. He wasn't put in a leaf compactor. They're making it up to fuck with us. Major, permission to. Open fire. We can't have that. Interfere now. God damn it. Listen, you're Lely. Everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. Fuck do you mean? Talker. We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic. A nice guy to be around. Yeah. He liked to chat up the natives. Share leaflets. Squeeze a bit of kid tass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. If Lely was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me? I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. Chill. This one isn't used to being suited this long. She's uncomfortable. We'll open fire just to hurry things along. Benatal 41. That really happened, didn't it? Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt or a hundred of them. Rude here. In your ship pipes, right in your fucking. <sighs> he likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets bored, 
Maybe he knew how to command. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Oh yeah! He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. But that didn't happen. Because hey, see Bill and Chipsy the Kipped here. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you fucks did nothing. Listen, man. We told you we... Told us what? What did you say? Who said that? Tattoo fuck! You'll die first! Fuck hell. He had blue eyes, didn't he? Your brother? Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Your brother did not deserve to go out like that, I promise. I will find his killer. Find his killer? Cop! His killer stands right there, shitting his pants. And you're standing in the way, protecting them. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. Today. Big talk, but that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Ooh, that went up to a 92. Good. He's thinking of leaf compactor, and he's thinking he's a bad leader. Okay. Fuck. We're lighting the spirit bomb and we're launching at him. We're making the first move. I mean, if we don't make the first move, they're gonna gun us all down. Holy shit. Oh my god. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Throw that shit. With a crash of shattering glass and a terrible roar, the fire draws in oxygen. The bomb hits the mercenary in the chest. Swallowing him in flames as he staggers backward. Fuck. In the fiery inferno, you see your tie <laughs> coiling around the man's neck. It is no longer horrific, but beautiful and pure. I only ever wanted you to have fun, Harry. <laughs> oh my god, it calls out to you one last time. Wait, I didn't even know your name! My name, should you know it, is Jufsen AS Men Fashion Model Colorful Tie, catalog number J327. <laughs> I know so little about you. How did we meet? One day a sad man walked into a clothing store. He looked really down, like he hadn't had fun in yard. He needed someone to show him how to rock and roll again. Jufsen AS catalog number J327 shone on the tie rack, trying to get his attention. The sad man picked it up and put it on. He looked at himself in the mirror, didn't smile. I'm young again. And from that moment on, we rode together. The rest of your clothes were still normal back then, but we took care of that soon enough. Normal police officer clothes just don't go well with a multi-pattern disco tie made of 98.7% pure flammable polyester. Nah, look, I'm rocking a look right now with it. Well, I was. It's fine. Did we... Have any fun? Truthfully, not a lot. I did everything a multi-pattern necktie can do to help a man. I mean, I tried to get you to do all the fun things. Drink beer, drink wine, drink cider. Go to parties with young people around and drink beer and cider. Do drugs too, so you don't fall asleep. You had some fun, but not enough to heal you. What's wrong with me? Your heart is broken, Bratushka. And it cannot be mended. Believe me, I've tried. Am I going to stay like this forever? No, you're going to be mowed down by gunfire from the two remaining marks. So no, not forever. Who broke my heart, Necktie? You both did, Bratan. Deep down, you know it was both of you. No, no. It was her, mostly. Don't lie to him, Necktie. What's going on with that guy? This guy? Well, his face has cracked open into... A scream of terror. It looks like he's performing some sort of a shamanistic dance that requires you to be on fire. <coughs> yeah, his body contorts in a very disturbing manner. There's no mincing words with this one. 
He's dying a horrible, painful death as you're talking to your tie in your head. Smells like a steak on the grill, the burning flesh in your nostrils. May he find peace by his stepbrother. It's good to see you still have capacity for compassion, my friend. Deep down, you are a good man. Goodbye, necktie. See you on the other side. The necktie disintegrates into molten heat, its last remaining embers, letting out a pop and crack that sounds like... Harry, for God's sake, watch out! Oh, fuck. Oh my god, I love how this is, keeps doing this. This is his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Holy fuck. Dude, the way that this looks right now is so funny. I think Kim stood closer to me than maybe he should be because I think he's clipping into me slightly, but it looks like I've got my fucking... He's ducked under my arm. I'll protect you, Kim. And he's pointed his gun out under my arm. <laughs> he's pointing it right at him. Holy fuck. Okay, the Hardys have split except two. Lizzie and Titus. She's pulling her gun out. An Easter ARFA7. Built for taking out light armored vehicles. It will devastate you. Okay, that's not the murder weapon. Which I didn't think it was gonna be, but I'm looking at it. I'm seeing a rifle and I'm like, a rifle? Kim, where is Kim? Blink. Think. You stare down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it. His eyes in the slit of the helmet. Like a camera lens. Focusing on you. 0.6 seconds remain. There are six little black dots in the tip of a thick barrel, like a honeycomb. This is a knock cannon. It shoots six rounds in one pull of the trigger. Absolute destruction. Fuck. Is there anything, anything, we could use to protect this frail body? That gun will tear us to pieces. The fact that we're wearing the armor from uh, their pal is is a statement in itself as well he's drunk drunk fighters overcorrect move right he aims further right get him to overshoot Ooh, clever a full suit of armor can't be too agile you can shift direction faster than he can dude all of the red checks i'm i'm so stressed right now even though they're high percentages uh dodge the shot he'll overcorrect you leap left a swarm of enemy men passes mere millimeters from your side. Shit. The fabric off your coat. Feels like the lightest of tucks. I cannot be killed. I have become immortal. The man tilts his head, trying to see through the clearing smoke for the next shot. Fuck. And sh look at how she's pointing this gun. Dude, I'm really stressed about this. Kim's going to take the shot at him, but... Oh, my God. Kim... Watch out. To your left. DePaul is about to take a shot too. At Kim. Where's my gun? Where's my chance to take a shot? I've thrown a spirit bomb. I need something else. God, please. Oh my god. The lieutenant says quietly without trembling. He aims. Face pale. He's aiming for the eye slot in Rude's helmet. An extremely difficult shot. Two shots ring at once. Uh! One from the lieutenant's pistol. Oh. And the other from the balls. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. Fuck. You hear a scream behind you. Fuck, who got shot? Oh my god, look at that. Kim got him. Kim. Who screamed? Glenn, dying. Oh no. Behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Two gunshot wounds. Oh my god, Glenn took bullets. Oh god, watch out. Yeah, there's still gonna be more. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through the burning meat and the flames. With his face boiling off, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. Holy shit. That's a 3% to evade the shot. Look the burning man in the eye. The look of vengeance framed by melting skin. 
This is the last thing he will do on Earth. But he will do it. He will end you. Here it comes. Death. Holy shit. I'm... I'm... I'm really worried about the consequences of failing trying to evade the shot because Kim is right next to us that uh, I genuinely think if we try this, which is a 3% and we fail, like what if we push Kim in the way of the shot by accident? What if Kim ends up taking the blow instead of us? I don't want that to happen. But then, we won't ever find out if we just let it happen. Fuck. It's an impossible reaction speed, 3%. If there was ever a chance to have the luckiest roll of a lifetime, it would be here. I really fucking hope this doesn't affect Kim. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. Inevitably failed. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. Listen, through the darkness and the pain. The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass. Stop! The cop! Protect the cop! He's down! Fuck. Touch your lower body. Feels slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened there. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything you've got. What parts of me are missing? Most of what's down there. Fuck, oh god. It's all gone. Open your eyes now. You have to see what's happening. No, no. It's just a fear. Even if. Who cares? No one wants you anyway. Try to open your eyes. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Out of it, a silhouette appears, crouching over you. You hear a familiar voice filled with urgency and fear. Hmm. It's so dark. I can't see anything. Stay with me. You hear me? Stay awake. Look at me. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly, you sense something behind him. A slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. Holy shit. An authority. The lieutenant trusts you and Kim truly trusts you. No! Kim! No, you say and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles, and your eyes are full of fear. That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound 
disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. Fall into total darkness. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. Huh. Will I be a ghost now? Brother, you already were a ghost. Up there, screaming along with all of them, scaring each other, haunting each other. It's the living who are ghosts. The dead are silent. They don't rattle windows or write letters in blood. The living do. Leave them behind. Rest. No. Let me back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing in his wound sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. There was a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. The engine of a caprice Kinema. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets worse. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. Holy fucking shit, dude. It's been two days. It's day eight. We were fucking out of it for two days. Kim cleaned up the room. Or well, maybe not Kim, but the room is clean. Holy shit. Oh, I thought we were gonna I thought that we were gonna lose Kim, and then I thought it was I thought it was done. I thought I was dead. Oh, he's fucking saved Kim's life. Kim. Sunrise, Arabellon. The piss jacket. Kim, you took it off. He never, he never wore it. That's weird. <laughs> what? Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. He never wore the jacket. That must have been a glitch then. Because I've worn the jacket, but we could never talk to him about getting him to wear the jacket. Hmm. 
The close proximity of death must have made the lieutenant contemplate his life choices. He's done with the jacket. Interesting. I never got to see him wear it. That's... I'm sad. The room. It's it's clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an oh, entire day. Gart cleaned it. How long have I been out? Two days. In and out. You've been up enough to take Dwamin and curse. And drink water. Fuck, I survived. Ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just got the Dwamin pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. Dwamin. Then it's not that bad. Neither surgical nor organ damage bad, but still under the counter bad. What did you say? Sunrise? Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary thing. Isn't that written on your... My gun. It's engraved on it. Cops like it. Is it war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. Fuck, man. It's been two days. What happened to the big dude? Because he shot at me. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. Good. Yes, we have also completely failed. But that's okay. Fuck. What happened? What happened? You threw an improvised petroleum bomb at the Major. A firefight ensued. I had no other option. Is he dead? Very. He died in the hospital. A bloodstained killer. I've already killed before, according to my record. Swallow. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He missed, or you dodged. I dodged. Then I shot and wounded him while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. Glenn did not survive. Titus, Fat Angus and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. Fuck. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Fuck. Angus and Theo didn't survive. Eugene? Yes. He's still alive too. You were bleeding out. You said something, I don't know what. And you warned me. I was able to disarm Officer De Paul before she got the jump on me. Thank you. I killed her. And that's what happened. And they're all dead? All three of the contractors? De Paul was the last to die. Everhart had their bodies returned to Connell for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Why? Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. How many casualties on the Union side total? Four. Glenn, Theo, Shanky and Angus. The fat one, he took a lot of bullets. Fuck. I thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. Mm. At ten in the morning. And that's... All. Honestly, with the fact that we succeeded in every fucking check opportunity all the way through there... And only failed when it was came to us taking a bullet. I don't see how it could have gone any better. Let's face it, officer. And this is both of our fault. It could have gone a little better. Six people are dead. I don't fucking know how we could have disarmed that scenario when they were they were locked and loaded and ready to go. They were going to gun all of them down. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive, both of us. Kim really trusts me. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. His smoking, his hunched back. You have it worse, but he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. How bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your tie. 
The outer side, thankfully, no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurocon. Can I walk? We will see. Huh. If it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you are going to have to become a psycho locomotor. <laughs> I'm a psycho locomotor. Good. You'll need to be. Whatever that is. Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. Didn't think so. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vicmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. They don't care about me at all. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Odd. You haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they're worried about you. Okay. That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were, wouldn't they be here? Better not agitate yourself further, it already hurts. Sorry. It's not my station. Then who treated me? I did. Wow. Thank you. No need. Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, stupid of me. Okay. Easy now. Your balance is way off. You feel like you're about to fall over on that thing. How are you? God, man, it would have been nice if maybe we shot some bullets out of our gun. <laughs> you know what I mean? God damn. We picked up a 9mm bullet, but there was, it was never in our inventory. It was just like an, an, an item that was like, we have this, and we can talk to... You know, the washerwoman about it. And that's it. But for some reason, there was no option for us to also be able to shoot. Which is a shame. We, we just had the spirit bomb. And the gun was just there for show. I mean, it wasn't. Because we obviously handed Kim our gun. And he shot. You know, we saved him in that moment. But... Before you know, before that, there was there was a moment where we were able to use our gun. So, I guess we did put that. Yeah, we did put that bullet in the gun. Then, fuck, I'm just crazy that there wasn't an opportunity for us to shoot uh, the gun. So wild. I feel fantastic. Let's let's rock. He nods. What happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. You don't know? We can't talk to Everard. The harbour is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. Joyce has left too, thanks to our meddling. You don't think it was a good idea? I don't know what to think. It might not have been a bad idea. There is a pin somewhere in the machine. Something is keeping Connell from sending in a death squad. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone, and Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Wait, you've checked? She's really... Guard confirmed she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hanged man? I don't know. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else, outside our circle of suspects, was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. This is because I'm Laputa Madre's peony, isn't it? Don't be narcissistic. Half the cops in Revachol West are his peonies. Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this case. That does make some sense. Hmm. The fucking Maybells, Kim, the flowers. What? They're on the roof. I did not I did not 
catch them. Fucking butterfingers. Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to catch everything. He's wrong. No, Kim. Every piece of garbage in this city is connected to the case. Okay. <laughs> the goddamn footprints. Yes. God cursed the footprints. Not solving the case for us. Au diable. <laughs> There's still a 28% possibility the shot came from a distance. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? See? There's that. You can do ballistics. An antique bullet from a Belmar grave. 4.46 millimeter. How hard can it be to find one? How hard can it be? It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around. We found one. All completely unusable. It's precisely how easy it is to find one that makes the bullet useless. There are all these old bunkers and weapon caches. Revolutionary era. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. But they seemed so mysterious. I can't believe they're fucking useless. <laughs> no need to be melodramatic. <laughs> the miracle hasn't happened yet. It's not over yet. He does not know what to reply. Looks out of the window, then back at you. It's morning outside, you think. You know what I think about solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is hard. It really is very hard. That concussion must be making him dizzy. You're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? <laughs> A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The jor aluminium box around you vibrates imperceptibly. A familiar cold. A red thread on the roof upstairs. Taut. Plucked like a string by the gust. We should check Clashy's room upstairs. Why not? You just extinguished that cigarette on the sole of your boot and dropped it on my carpet, man. This room has just been cleaned. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. I love that Gart replaced the window in, in this room, too. Oh, wow. Okay. It's clean. My god. And we lived. And we have just tasks that aren't tied to a day. Just our last, just our last few tasks. We can't get this out of my list because I can't do anything with it. Go to her room, search it once more, upstairs in the bedroom, the window. Perhaps it will yield something. Look, my people killed. Went up to four from three. There you go. Rise and shine. Stop! Stop. Why Why does it keep coming? Every time I think it might be a new thought. It's the, it's the communism thought. I've already done it, sir. Newly replaced glass, shining in the morning light. You hear traffic outside. Back in the world again. The stereo 8 player has been reunited with its right speaker. You see gleaming white enamel. No bottles inside. Look, the door is open. You can walk right into Kim's room. Nice. We can actually the see Kim's room now. It's been wiped completely clean. You see the reflection of your face in the mirror. Ooh, we got a breakthrough. Wait, that thought is finally done. P five hundred. Remember that weakness you were looking for in the ceramic armor? <clears throat> like, maybe it can only stop small, fast projectiles, but a large, slow-moving pry bar would shatter it. Or, if I run an electrical current through it, maybe it will melt. Or, personal favorite, frequency something something radio weapon. None of that would work. You need to shoot the part of the enemy that doesn't have fair with a T-500 on it. Because the armor itself is invulnerable. Good news is, so are the armor pieces on you. Bonuses. Plus two hand-eye coordination against enemies. Oh my god. 
Oh, we literally had the perfect thought bonus for the tribunal. It's okay, because it's okay, because we obviously maxed out our hand-eye coordination, but like, god damn. God damn. <laughs> It's too late now, dude. I may as well forget this thought and learn another. So silly. Get this get this thought out of here. We don't need it anymore. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, we're not gonna go up against enemies in that armor. Get it get it out of here. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> oh god. I'm internalizing apricot chewing gum scented one then. That's so funny. Well, that was a good thought to internalize. It was a waste of a skill point, wasn't it? There you go. Kim's room. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, hang on. Yeah, dude, Kim's room is so tiny. The alarm is set for 6.50 a.m. Medicinal supplies in the cupboard. Uh, Mercurochrome, a scalpel, antibiotics. Because he did the operation on us. These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork, half finished. You may cap notes on this and other recent cases. I had got opened the door to your room. You were running a low bacterial fever the first night. Thank you for keeping this uh, thing alive a little longer. It would have been easy were it not for my concussion. We both got lucky, considering the odds we faced. Let's go. I am sure neither of us feels solid enough to keep loitering in this room. Let's go. I wanted to lo loiter in your room, Kim. Cool. Oh my god, okay. The game continues. It did not come to an end. We did not just die <laughs> on the streets. My god. But the mercenary, the mercenary tribunal has taken place, and the apocalypse has not yet come, but there is still more for us to discover. We've got tasks to address, we still have to find the murder weapon, we're going to check Classier's room once again, and we'll see what's going on. We've still got a crime to solve, we've got to find this killer, so thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Disco Elysium. We will bring this one to a close, and next time, we will continue with the investigation with my brother-in-arms, Kim, side by side, survivors of the tribunal. And we'll see if we can actually crack this case. I'll see you then.